means clustering using python so first off a bit of an overview on the concept of k means clustering so uh, it is basically a method to group observations based on patterns in the variables that you have in your data set okay and k means clustering is what we call as an unsupervised learning technique so this is as opposed to let's say techniques such as a linear regression or a logistic regression or a random forest model these techniques we call them as supervised technique supervised learning techniques that is because uh we split the data into training data and testing data right and uh, when you train the model you train it based on um, observations whose outcome whose value of the predict uh, predicted variable or whose target variable value is already known so that is why we call those techniques as supervised learning technique here for clustering what you will do is at the end of the clustering exercise against each observation you will assign Uh, to which cluster it belongs to okay and that cluster to which it belongs to is something that you determine out of the patterns in the data it is not something that is already there in the data so that is why we call clustering as an unsupervised learning technique and uh, a natural application of uh, the clustering technique is the customer segmentation customer segmentation in a wide variety of domains uh, you know typically for uh, marketing Uh, in let's say you no know, insurance company or uh, any retail stores e-commerce so in all these places we uh, use k means clustering as a uh, customer segmentation mechanism and then uh, when you are training other machine learning models let's say random forest model or something clust- uh, clustering can be an activity that you can use to generate features okay so for example let's say you're predicting the uh, shopping cart value of a customer using a random forest model okay then one of the features can possibly be to which cluster does the customer belong to and adding this kind of a cluster as a feature sorry, a feature will help could possibly help you increase the accuracy of your model okay so this is how clustering is used as one of the techniques for feature engineering okay and there are certain other applications as well uh one of them i'll you know, briefly talk about in the next slide uh so these are two applications from my past experience so uh many weeks back or you know a few months back when i joined i talked about one case where uh, i had to segment customers for a health insurance company uh, and the other application of clustering that i worked on uh so again in the operations domain and you know yesterday you guys were saying that always uh, when someone talks about um, this kind of a subject i jump in right so today also i have uh, taken a cue from what you said yesterday i've given a similar example from my experience uh so in my previous company where i was working what we had were uh, so we were selling different types of products on an e-commerce platform right and uh, these products are typically stored in warehouses of let's say a 1 lakh square feet of area in different types of storage configurations so we'll have something like a rack pallet and that rack will have will be of different types so rack with dimensions of x y z rack with dimensions of a b c and similarly for pallets and so on okay uh, so what we did was uh, we clustered products based on the length breadth and height uh and then we grouped the products based on the cluster and assigned them to the storage configuration so something like okay mobile phones should be stored in a in the rack which is of size xyz uh shoes should be stored in a rack which is of size abc okay and similarly memory cards should be stored in a pallet of size uh, def and so on okay so that is the third point here and then what we measured was which is the product storage strategy that yields the maximum utilization by utilization what i mean is the rack or the pallet whatever we have uh, we calculate the volume of that storage area and then we calculate the volume of all those products stored inside that storage area okay and then the total product volume divided by the total rack volume so that will give the utilization of that rack okay so we see which product storage strategy yields the maximum utilization and then we recommend the right storage configuration for each product so at the end of the day we say okay if it's a mobile phone store it in the rack of this dimension if it is a shoe store it in the rack of this, this dimension the uh, concept behind this is basically uh, you when you have crores and crores of uh, units of inventory in your warehouse uh, 
uh, you have to optimize your space accordingly okay uh, so the basic principle is uh, you take any particular storage configuration it will help you only when most of the products stored inside that configuration are of a similar length breadth and height okay so that is why we cluster those products based on the length breadth and height and then uh, we uh, assign or we store those products to in, inside the storage areas based on similar di- uh, products which have similar dimension so that within a given rack or pallet more number of uh, products can be stored thereby in- improving the utilization of your storage space so this is uh no this is not your run of the mill example so typically when people talk about using clustering no they always talk about customer segmentation of course that is the most widely used technique uh, but this is also some uh, technique which is uh, you know uh, this might not be out in the open but uh, uh, this is also one possible area where clustering can be used uh so with that let's go into the clustering concept all right Uh, so what we do in this clustering algorithm is basically so w- one uh, quick uh, question uh, sai ah, see yes, uh, just uh, uh, in the, i think the second previous slide you mentioned application as feature engineering so just can you just tell me again what you meant by right right uh, so let's take one example let's take a retail example uh, let's say our target variable is uh, uh, the amount of uh, the cart value of the customer or the uh, build amount of a customer mm-hmm. Hi guys are you there Come on let's let's say we are trying to predict that Hello okay yeah i think i sort of lost you for uh, 30 seconds uh, sai so uh, so yeah. what was what was the target variable huh. so let's say we are trying to predict the uh, cart value of a customer okay uh so one of the independent variables or the predictor variables could mm-hmm. possibly be the uh, cluster to which the customer belongs to mm-hmm. and this okay. cluster uh, we can estimate using you know demographic uh, characteristics and uh, previous shopping behavior and so on mm-hmm. so this okay. could possibly help us increase the accuracy of the model right right okay got it so obviously something like a, a corporate versus a retail you know can you know uh, exactly. make a big difference right or maybe even within that somebody you know who purchases for maybe a specific use uh, huh. you know which has low value items versus maybe some high value items this will make a big difference okay. yeah there could also be customers who uh, purchase high value items on less frequent basis and uh, low mm-hmm. value items on a more frequent basis and so on right you know another thing could be that okay there's a large family they obviously need a lot more than a uh, smaller family right exactly uh, yeah. so, okay got it. okay great awesome yeah so uh, what we do in this clustering algorithm is basically uh, this algorithm considers k random centroids in the data okay and uh, this k is something that you specify uh, i'll talk about how we specify how we determine that uh, value of the k okay uh, so we consider k random centroids in the data and then we calculate this metric called as sum of squares okay and we calculate this metric in two types so we calculate a within cluster sum of squares and between clusters sum of squares okay and then we repeat this process for n number of iterations this n is also something that we specify uh the objective here being that we maximize the between clusters distance and minimize the within cluster distance okay so this is because uh, within a cluster all the observations should be as uh as close as possible or as similar as possible so that is why we minimize the within cluster distance but between clusters between two different groups of customers let's say uh, they should be uh, as different from each other as possible so that is why we maximize the between clusters distance and uh, how we calculate this distance is basically we calculate the sum of squares of the distances between the cluster centroid and every other point in the cluster so this is to calculate the within cluster distance the between cluster distance we calculate as sum of squares of distances between different cluster centroids okay. uh, any questions here until now on the concept or on any of the applications okay uh, so i'll talk about uh, how we do this in python exactly again uh, this is quite similar to some of the other techniques that we have seen 
So first we load the required libraries in Python. Then we load the data. Some cleaning might be required depending on what data you have. And then we determine the number of clusters. And uh, once we determine how, how many clusters to create, we actually set about creating those clusters in the data. So that is to say, uh, let's say your data has 100 observations. You identify each observation to which cluster it belongs to. Okay, so this is the most important part of it. And then you get a visual representation of uh, the cluster. And post this stage, you know, you can do any sort of a descriptive analytics on your data. See, that is one of the primary advantages of this clustering algorithm, right? Those clusters help you uh, basically break down one big problem into multiple smaller components. And each component or each segment of the data that you have, you can ex examine its characteristic. So for example, let's take that retail uh, example, right? So what we were talking about. Uh, the cart value of the customers, previous purchasing behavior, frequency of purchases and so on. Or you can also look at demographic variables, income, and see how uh, the cl customer classes different, uh, differ from one another. So that is, uh, so this clustering is something that will help you in uh, doing a lot of descriptive analytics on your data. So uh, with that, let me talk about how we actually implement the clustering algorithm in Python. Um, hey, uh, Sai, one quick question. Yes, See, yes. Um, for, uh, what are the hyperparameters we can tune here? Is it just the number of clusters or do we have anything else that we can fine tune? Uh, so, uh, this is basically the clustering function in Python. Okay. And uh, the first parameter that we have is the number of clusters. The second, second parameter is uh, something called as a k-mean. So this is, so we have different types of clustering algorithms. So one is a k-means algorithm. Then we have something called as a k-medoid algorithm. And uh, there is also something called as a hierarchical clustering model. K-means uh, is what I have used here. Uh, so here we specify the type of algorithm. And then uh, the next parameter is basically the number of iterations uh, that we need to do. So we said that uh, initially we pick k number of seeds in the model or k number of centroids in the model, and then we calculate those uh, within uh, within an inter-cluster distance, right? Uh, and we try to minimize the within cluster distance and maximize that inter-cluster distance. So for how many iterations should that algorithm run uh, so that we obtain a good separation of classes? Uh, so for that, we use this parameter, uh, maximum iterations. Okay, sounds good. Those are the ones. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, okay, so let me just start by loading the libraries. So yeah, pandas is the library for data frame operations. NumPy, as usual, we need some arrays here. So that's why we do that. Uh, and uh, so yeah, this is not required. Just comment that out. Uh, and I told you that we will also visualize the clusters that we have formed out of the data, right? So for that, we import this library called matplotlib, uh, which help, helps you plot graphs in Python. And uh, the scikit-learn library is your repository of all machine learning algorithms in Python. So from scikit-learn, we import this. So from, from scikit-learn, from this clustering module, we import the k-means clustering uh, algorithm and then we load the data file here in this step. So the data has 381 rows and 13 columns. Uh, so this is essentially, uh, um, you know, a banking or a loan data set. So we have something called as a loan ID, gender, whether that person was married uh, and so on, so a lot of other. So what is the education level, uh, self-employed, applicant income, co-applicant income, loan amount, uh, term as in the days of repayment, credit history, um, there's also property area, and loan status is basically whether that person was given a loan or not. Okay. Uh, so just to keep things simple and uh, you know, help us understand the concept better, let us just take these two um, columns from the data. Okay. So we will take this applicant income and the loan amount for which they have applied. Okay. So for that, I'll, I'll just take only these two columns from the data, I'll use this kind of a syntax. And then uh, the next step I told is to determine the number of clusters, right? So for that, what we do is we generate something called as an elbow plot. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, so I am assigning an empty array of numbers called as the uh, 
WCSS. So this WCSS stands for within cluster sum of squares. I mean, you can basically give anything here just for the purpose of understanding. I have given WCSS. Okay. So here you see there is a for loop. Okay. And I'm saying for i in the range of 1 to 11. Okay. And here I have given a k means clustering algorithm function. And here for the number of clusters, I have given the value of i. Okay. So what this piece of code is going to do is uh, it will run this k-means clustering algorithm the first time it will run with one cluster the second time in the for same for loop it will run with two clusters the third time in the same for loop it will run with three clusters so it will continue this process up, up until 11 clusters okay and for each clustering uh, step for each of these 11 uh, clustering iterations it will calculate this uh, within uh, cluster sum of squares okay and it will just append uh, the within cluster sum of squares for each of those 11 iterations okay so right now if you see this within cluster sum of squares list of numbers is empty right but just see when i run this for loop just see what happens uh, you can just ignore the warning it is something related to a memory uh, and it is uh, this warning does not exist with the current uh, version that we use so it's okay uh, so initially, if you see this list had zero elements in it, it was empty. Okay. But now it has 10 elements in it. Okay. So that is because from one to 11, uh, always remember in Python, uh, when you specify something like a range, right, it will always ignore the last value. So if you want it to run for 10 iterations, you have to specify one to 11. If you want to run it for 11 iterations, you have to specify one to 12. Okay. So now we have specified one to 11. It will omit the last value to run for uh, 10 times and for each of those 10 times it will calculate that within cluster sum of squares okay and basically after what do we do after calculating this for 10 iterations we just plot for each clustering iteration from 1 to 10 what is the value of this within cluster sum of squares let me just show you what it looks like then you will understand what i mean by this elbow plot Okay, so you see this picture, this is what we call as the elbow plot, okay? Uh, you take it from here, from the top, when there was only one cluster in the data, the within cluster sum of squares was way huge, okay? When you have two clusters in your data, you can see a significant drop in this within cluster sum of squares. So this WCSS, it is nothing but the within cluster distance, okay? That distance, if you see, when you had only one cluster in the data, the distance was very huge. But when you had two clusters in the data, the distance has dropped significantly. This is to say that there was where there was a much better separation in your data when you make, made them into two clusters. When you had three clusters in your data, you can achieve still more separation. When you have four clusters, you can achieve further more separation and so on. Okay. This, uh, this plot, you know, looks like an elbow. So this is basically the bend in the elbow that you have. So when you bend your hand, uh, so the elbow comes at the top and your arm comes at the bottom and there's a bend that you have, right? So that is why we call this as an elbow plot. And how does this help us identify the number of clusters that we need to have in our algorithm? You see at what area is this bend uh, happening? Okay, so here you can say, you know, you can consider the bend, bend either at either this two or at this three okay so this is where a significant bend is happening and i would say it's even three because uh, this this part right so this is what i would call as the bend so let us assume that three is the optimal number of cluster so this el elbow plot is something that will give you a guideline on what is the optimal number of clusters to have in your data okay and then okay i'm looking at this plot and then i'm saying i will go ahead with three clusters uh, any questions, guys, until now? Okay. So, uh, with that, what I'll do is in the next step, I'm using the same k-means clustering algorithm, uh, but I'm just fixing the number of clusters as three based on what I have identified from my elbow plot. Okay. And let me run this algorithm. And the next step, what I'm doing is I am assigning the cluster to each row of the data. Okay. So, you see here we have 381 rows and two columns now right when i run this step you see it will have three columns so 381 rows and three columns the third column is nothing but 
the cluster to which each observation belongs okay so first observation belongs to cluster 2 uh, second observation belongs to cluster 0 uh, third observation belongs to cluster 1 and so on okay so by default in python the index starts from 0 so that is why it doesn't give the cluster numbers as 1 2 3 it gives it as 0 1 and 2 okay so uh, for this i'm using this particular function uh, K means is the clustering object that I have created, and on this object, I am applying this fit underscore predict function. And uh, this function I am applying on this data set that we have the data, okay. And it will just generate the clusters as a separate column called as cluster in the same data. So that is where you had you got the third column in the data set. So once we do that, I'm just doing some visual you know, descriptive analytics. The first of which is basically, I am trying to identify where is the cluster centroid located. Okay. So for that, I, again, I'm using the plot function, PLT function from the matplotlib library. I'm just plotting a scatter plot. X axis will have the applicant income. Uh, y axis will have the loan amount. So these two are columns that we see here uh, in our data set, so applicant income and loan amount. Uh, and uh, let me just run that. Let's see how the plot looks like. Yeah. So you see here, this is basically the uh, plot that we have. So the first line that we have, right? X axis applicant income and Y axis loan amount. So this is basically your applicant income and the loan amount. And then the next statement that you have cluster centers, zeroth column and cluster centers for the first column so this is nothing but the uh, i'm just plotting it as coordinates on a, in a two dimensional space right so uh, i'm just uh, sort of separating or showing the centroids separately so that is why i have that extra line over here and uh, you can see also that i have specified c is equal to red so i'm just saying cluster centers alone please mark it in a red color uh, so this s is nothing but the size of the point so 300 pixels just again to distinguish that this is a centroid point so i'm increasing the size of these three points here and then i'm marking it in a red color so that is why we have the second line of code over here plt dot shows just you know, shows the uh, plot in this console over here that's it okay so now that we have seen where the centroids are located i want to see how is my data split based on the three clusters that i have created okay so for that i am giving this particular line so first cluster i will color it in a blue color the next cluster i will color, color it in green color the other cluster i will color it in a cyan color and i will just color this same plot uh, based on these three cluster, uh, colors so that i can visually distinguish between the clusters of customers that i have in my data okay so i will first define this uh, list of colors and then uh, here what I am doing is for each uh, cluster that we have so we have three, three clusters in the data cluster 0 cluster 1 and cluster 2 for each of those clusters I'm taking it separately in a separate data set and I'm giving uh, a color to that data set and I'm doing the same plot basically three times okay so for first time for the zero cluster second time for the first cluster third time for the second cluster so uh, I'm just so since I need each cluster in a separate color that's why i have a for loop which i am running three times once for every cluster but the the uh, syntax is basically the same i'm just plotting it uh, between the applicant income and the loan amount uh, i'm just also specifying the labels for the x and y axis that is the only difference so you just see how it looks after we do this yeah see now uh, so x axis has the income with the label so in the previous plot that we saw uh, it did not have the label because we did not specify the labels here but in the third plot here we have specified uh, the label for the x axis and the label for the y axis so um, income and loan amount in thousands and here you can see a visual representation of the uh, number of clusters that we have okay and you can see uh, the separation here uh, so this is where your elbow plot plays a role okay uh, we saw the elbow plot we said that the bend was around two clusters or one uh, three clusters so uh, when you make when you go ahead with three three clusters this is the separation that you get okay uh, let's say for example if you had gone on gone ahead with two clusters then you would have probably got this as one big chunk of the data 
and this as a separate cluster so of course you know this is maybe this might not be a real time data set in reality it's possible to achieve you know this kind of a perfect uh, beautiful looking separation in the data but uh, it just to, it just goes to show that uh, you know you can visualize this in python using the matplotlib library and see how good uh, of a clustering uh, you have done on the uh, data okay and you can yeah, also, also uh, typically there are eligibility criteria right by income uh so i think it's sort of reflecting that in the clusters yes because see for a specific income you give certain amount of uh, loan and then if it goes up then you have a higher and so on and so forth but there yes. seems to be no overlap very limited overlap so because i think people with higher income may also take uh, lower uh, loan that is very much a possibility possible i but think for these some reason values that we have a uh, few people seem to take that but typically i think in this data set uh, people who have a higher income seem to be taking only uh, yeah, <laughs> a higher amount of flow right yes yes yeah, i see what you're saying okay. so yeah uh, so that's what i had for today uh, any questions or clarifications uh, okay so yeah uh, i will of course share the uh, code the data and uh, uh, the powerpoint presentation with you feel free to go through it and uh, you can tweak you know the number of clusters the number of uh, iterations that we perform uh, you can tweak it in that kminst function and see how this uh, output varies and you can also try it out with different variables and so on so yeah that's what i had for today